If my boyfriend asks me to marry him, I'm going to say no. Okay. Why am I going to say no? Because we started dating five years ago. And then a month after we started dating, his friends started dating his girlfriend. And they had a kid after two years of being together. Uh, this is why social media is destroying relationships. So she's more concerned about comparing. Once again, I talk about this all the time. Always. This is a North American thing, I think, primarily, because I don't notice it as much other parts of the world. But this constant looking at thy neighbor and having some sort of envy and using it as a comparison point, maybe, just maybe, I'm going to go on a whim here, okay? Maybe you don't offer your boyfriend the same thing the other girl offers her guy, maybe. Or maybe the other guy is just more further along, right? I guess we'll see. It's a long video. We have a long way to go. But even just starting from a comparison point is amazing because you're not focused on your own stuff. You're focused on what someone else has. And now you're saying, I'm going to say no. Well, why don't you just break up with the guy? If you don't like him that much, break up, okay? If you feel like you're entitled to something, that's fine. You can feel entitled all you want, but at the end of the day, that person has control over their life. So they're, if they're not going to give you what you want, you have to go get it elsewhere. This is the reality. You're not entitled to anything. We had our daughter after four years of being together. His friend pays all the bills in their home. We pay 50-50. <laughs> Should have set that standard early on, I guess. I mean... Girls coming online and complaining is, is just so, so sad. Um, his friend got engaged last year. And um, we haven't gotten engaged. His friend got married this past weekend. Can we please talk about the reasoning? Can we talk about the reasoning, please? Like, why? What's this, what are the specifics? Like, give me some details here. Like, just stop just complaining. Oh, he got married. I didn't. Blah, blah, blah. Like, why? Come on. Is it just because your boyfriend sucks? Is that what it is? Truly? Is that the only reason? And it might be. I don't know. But like, give me some specifics to work with here. And the crazy thing is that when we started talking, he said, if we last a year, I'd like to get married and try for a baby. So a year came by, nothing. Then he said, well, maybe after three years, let's look at it like a lease payment. You get three years. Three years came by. Nothing. Then he said, maybe five. Five is a big deal. Bet. Five came. Nothing. So, I got tired of dropping hints. Got tired of sending ring photos. And I was just hoping that it would happen. So he goes to his friend's wedding this weekend, and I'm hoping that it would be a motivator. But to be honest, at this point, I don't even care. Like, I really don't care. Like, the magic of the idea of how he would propose and and all of that, it's like, if you had that much doubt about marrying me, now I have these doubts. Like, why? What do you need? What's not enough? Shoot, I, I know I'm enough. I know I'm enough. I know I'm enough. Clearly not. The results show otherwise, wouldn't you say? Not to make me feel insecure. So he says, well, I made you the mother of my first and only child, and that should be good enough because that's a big deal. That's forever. And yeah, it's a big deal. That's forever. But like, damn, I'm good enough to be a baby mama, but I'm not good enough to be a wife. So at this point, I'm like, if he proposes, I'm going to say no. Why? Because if it took him so long and he had so many doubts, he thinks it's all under his control. I hate to say this because I don't know enough about the scenario, but it doesn't matter. If you have his child, so it doesn't matter. Like you saying this and pretending that you have leverage in the scenario, it just shows you don't. The fact you're complaining about it so much shows you have no leverage. So it's better to just let it go. And you already had the kid with the guy. To say no now is so counterintuitive because it, all it does is just 
show, well, twofold. It's a twofold issue. Number one, he probably shouldn't have made a bunch of false promises. Obviously, there's some responsibility. On the other side, though, I mean, if you guys live together and you have everything, why are you so obsessed with the title and the status of it? I mean, if you guys live together for so long, I mean, you're in the eyes of the government you're together anyway. So is it just that you want uh, you want a big event? Do you just want a private wedding? Like, what specifically is it? Right? What specifically is so important about this event now? Like, if you're religious, okay, let's talk about that. But if you're not, what is it? I just want to understand a little bit deeper of what exactly are you looking for when you already have everything. You just don't have the formalized event, I guess. Is that the thing you're missing right here? I just want to understand a little bit more. So his power, like when I feel like it, that's when I'm going to propose and she's going to say yes. No. I so you are making it about power, even though you have none. You have the power to say no. Congratulations. And then what do you gain by saying no? Genuinely, what do you gain? This, this logic confuses me so much. Compare, 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 compare. She already has the kid. I'm assuming they probably live together. So she already has effectively all the same rights and privileges. So what is it then? You're going online and you're bashing your guy. If you're willing to do that, I can only imagine what you're doing in private. I'm going to take a assumption, a wild assumption. <laughs> wild. You probably nag a lot. That's going to be my guess. In the end, you picked him. That's the truth. So where's the accountability? Where's the accountability in your end? You picked him. You had the kid. You didn't have to do those things before the marriage, technically. You didn't have to. So where's the accountability in your end to say, oh, well, I didn't get what I wanted before I had the, ch the child, right? None. It's all his fault. And now if he asks me, I'm going to say no. You have no power. Stop lying to yourself. And stop coming on social media and airing your dirty laundry. It just looks bad on you, if I'm being honest. I have some say, too. Yes, you have say. And you already cast your vote. I'm going to have a child out of wedlock. Okay, you already did that. I'm assuming you moved in. You've already been in a relationship for five years. You've already cast your vote. Now, pretending like you have power is pointless. All you're going to do is break your family apart out of some weird principle. It's like, okay... Go ahead, I guess. You should have made that decision five years ago. Doing it now does nobody any favors. I have some say too. And I can say no. Just because you propose this doesn't mean I'm going to say yes. Look at this masculinity. Like for me to say yes, he's going to have to pull off a really, really, really nice... I need this. Wow, wow, wow. Like, like super romantic, like back... Yeah, all background. this. Yeah, yeah. Flower petals. Yeah, yeah. Pink. I want this. Flower I want petals. that. Maybe a violinist. Yeah, sure. Just so spend a bunch of useless money because you're that special, right? Or in front of the castle. Yes. The With fireworks in the back. Some, something. Something to make it feel like it was... Hey, the market is open. You're entitled. Uh, you have a right to do whatever you want, right? So, hey, you know, say no. And I wish you the best. I hope you go out there and, and find that guy that will do all of those things for you because you've decided arbitrarily that you deserve all of these things. I'm glad that you decided that you deserve it. Worth waiting. Damn near six years because we're about to be together for six years come this July. Well, so come July and there's no proposal. As soon as they start putting all these, if a girl really loves you, man, she's not going to care. She's going to be happy to be with you. Once all these requirements start coming in, not even worth it, man. What's the point of all of it, right? The point is to be together, isn't it? Right? Point of it is to be together. I understand women want all these different things, but such a cost, practically speaking, for what? Assuming, by the way, you're already non-religious and all these things. You guys already did all these things. So what's now the magic advantage to marriage? Right? And if it was just about marriage, then just going down to the courthouse and getting it done 
that, that can be done very quickly. So clearly it's more than that. There's something more going on here. It's something to do with entitlement. It's something to do with, I deserve to be treated like a queen, like a princess that I am, even though I've already given everything I have for less. And is that even such a bad thing either? We have to ask this question. Uh, none of this really makes any sense. It's all just complaining, complaining, complaining. I deserve, I deserve, I deserve. I mean, it's just standard stuff, right? I'm going to say no. Go ahead, say no. Like I said, hopefully you'll find the guy that gives you what you think you deserve. If he ever asks. And if he doesn't ask. I guess I'm just his baby mom. You chose that, though. You chose it. I don't understand. Are we, are we supposed to play the violin sound? The, the, the sad violin? I don't get it. You chose it this way. You're really going to blame someone else for all of your problems and then come online and air your dirty laundry? Man, I don't even know how this guy lasted as long as he did, to be honest. 